Newton had three laws of motion. How might they relate to the modern business world? A recent news event made me think about Newton's third law of motion. And that made me wonder if all three laws could affect us at work. This time we're going to look at what those rules are, how they might affect us, and if they can be useful in a work or a business context. Okay, Newton's first law. Newton's first law states that an object in a uniform state of motion tends to remain in the state of motion unless an external force is applied to it in some way. So, what we're saying here is unless you put some force in it, you can't expect to change its motion. Now, let's think about this in a work context. At work, we often see things moving with the same momentum they always have done, driven by the same people and the same processes. If you want to change them, if you want to change something, if you want to affect it, you're actually going to have to engage yourself and exert some force. In other words, as tempting as it is, don't sit on the sideline and watch what you really don't like. You know, we all want to make some change in the world, but if you're going to make some change, you're going to have to engage. You're going to need to exert some force if you really want to affect something's motion, whether that's a product, a business, or a process. Okay, Newton's second law of motion. Law 2 states that a relationship between an object's mass, m, its acceleration, a, and the force applied, uh, f, is f equals ma. Look, the equation doesn't really matter. What matters here is that this extends the idea of law 1 and answers the question, how much force do I need? That question comes up because sometimes we say that we've tried to influence something, but we really didn't try that hard. Occasionally, I even hear people who like to claim they were against something that finally failed. I told you so, is what they say in some words or other. But what you know is, they didn't really communicate that view that they were against it when the process was going on. They didn't really say anything up front, they waited for it to fail. The lesson is, the bigger the issue, the more effort you are going to need to put in, the more force you're going to have to exert to make a change. Okay, Newton's third law. So this was the law that actually made me think about this whole subject uh, entirely. Law 3 says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, the new story, you'll probably work it out, was two radio hosts in Australia spoofed a nurse in the UK um, and she later committed suicide. They got her to admit uh, something about a member of the royal family. Okay, look, clearly this is a tragedy uh, and this is going to be much more complex than I can use here. But what I was interested in was not the spoof phone call that caused the suicide, but the statement the DJs made afterwards. One of them said no one could possibly imagine that she would commit suicide. And that's really what struck me about Law 3 here. As business people, we need to see that they miss Newton's third law. They exerted a force and they got a reaction. You know, in business, we have to learn to live with the consequences of our actions, whether we like them or not. You know, sometimes those actions are going to be unintended, like the suicide was in this case. Now, you might want to see this as an excuse to say, well, how could I have known? There's nothing I could have done. I couldn't believe uh, that would have happened. But that's also the wrong answer. The only real approach is to be very careful to plan and then hold yourself accountable. You have to accept both the good and the bad reactions that happen and come from your actions. You're going to have to engage if you're going to change something, but that action will have a reaction. And you need to think through that reaction and its implications, but don't avoid getting engaged.